At Georgia Power, we're investing in our power grid, expanding our infrastructure to shorten outage and repair time, and providing a more diverse fuel mix at a cost 15% below the national average. Because with reliable energy, the future is in your hands. Well, we cannot wait to see Georgia Tech Volleyball in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2009. The Yellow Jackets get it going Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern versus Lipscomb. And joining us now from Omaha, Nebraska, inside the bubble from your Yellow Jackets junior outside hitter, Michaela Dowd. Michaela, welcome to Tech Talks. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. There is no place that you would rather be right now and confined to a bubble. What's life been like for you and your teammates inside the bubble in Omaha? It's been pretty good, honestly. I think uh, my expectations were that I was going to be stuck in my room for about 24 hours while I was quarantined, but I really have been able to like hang out with my team. Um, we've been able to leave our hotel room and walk around outside. And so it's actually been really interesting. There's a lot more to do in Omaha, Nebraska than I initially thought, um, but it's really just a good time to be around my team and really just bond with each other. It's been, it's been pretty cool. A little bubble bonding. Can't beat it. <laughs> Let's go back to Selection Sunday and describe for us the moment when you saw Georgia Tech's name flash on the screen and the way that all that anxiety and uncertainty had flipped to elation in literally the blink of an eye. It was so crazy because we had been waiting for our names to be called and, you know, the, we had been waiting for these super long commercial breaks. There was at least four of them before our name was even called in. We were the first name off of the commercial break and I remember just like not expecting it whatsoever. I think um, our photographer has a video of the whole situation and you can see me just like sitting there for probably a good five seconds, not moving, just like in shock. I think my mouth was like, wide open i was just staring at the screen i didn't believe it and then i think what snapped me out of it was hearing mari and julia screaming at the top of their lungs like everyone has just started screaming and i was like oh okay like this is good news like we made it like it really happened and i just hopped up and started jumping around with everybody else and um it was it was really cool it was a really cool experience it definitely um showed me that like anything could happen when you least expect it and like the best things happen when you're really just playing your hardest and you're just hoping for the best like i think um this is definitely a novel year i've never had a year like this in my entire life i don't think anyone has and to end it on such an amazing note like to go through all of that hardship and then here we are in the ncaa tournament when we I have never been able to do that before with an amazing group of people. It really just shows like how resilience can be rewarded. Yeah, coming so close to the NCAA tournament last year, but not getting that at-large berth in spite of how unprecedented this season was with it being shortened and split between the fall and spring. How much did the experience last November missing out on the NCAA tournament fuel you and your teammates throughout this whole year? I think just knowing that we had been able to do a postseason tournament, win a postseason tournament, um, and just kind of keep that fire going. Like we had the winning streak. I think we had about a 10 game winning streak and we continued to win throughout our tournament like consistently. I think that showed us that we have the capability of winning consecutively, of like fighting every single day, fighting every single game and making it as far as possible. And so after having that amazing experience last year, we knew that if we were to get the opportunity again to play in the NCAA tournament, that we could do it. You know, I think there was definitely something valuable about not making it last year because we were able to grow, we were able to learn, we were able to deal with that hardship and come back this next year and like know what that feeling is like and know that we never want to be in that position again. So the best case scenario right now is to prove to the NCAA ourselves, our fans, everyone who is around us that we deserve to be here and that we can continue to win like we did last year. Not just deserve to be here, but stay here. Uh, you are part of a team that is 11th in the nation in hitting percentage. And I want you to dote on a couple of your teammates and I'm talking about Mariana Brambila and Julia Bergman, your fellow outside hitters, both first team all ACC. From the perspective of an outside hitter like yourself, what makes Mariana and Julia such a formidable duo? Um, this is probably something that unless you were on our team, you wouldn't even know, but they just love volleyball so much. Like they are always touching a ball before and after practice, whether they're actually getting good reps in or they're just playing around and like, you know, trying to like just have fun with volleyball. Like they are just, 
amazing people and they love the sport so much that I can't imagine them being on the court and not being able to dominate. Like they are best friends with the ball. Like they are best friends with each other. They really are such a great duo. They literally speak their own language on the court. <laughs> and I think like one without the other, of course, they're both amazing individually, but they are such a great team and we all really support each other so much. Like I know what they're capable of and like we all support each other and they're just able to accomplish some amazing things and i'm just so grateful to be on a team with them so you guys open up against the lipscomb which comes in riding an 11 match win streak wednesday 7 p.m eastern there's going to be a big watch party at callaway plaza for georgia tech fans and georgia tech students and if you win that you will take on the number three national seed minnesota it's not going to be an easy road but i know you guys did not come so far to only come this far Michaela, what makes this Georgia Tech team capable of going on a deep run and, like we talked about, staying in Omaha for a while? I personally think we we have nothing to lose. Like I told you before, like we all we can do is prove that we, we deserve to be here and mainly to ourselves. Like we have come so far and we're not supposed to win these games. Like according to the seating, we're not supposed to go far. We're not supposed to beat Lipscomb in Minnesota and whoever next and whoever next. And so there's no pressure. The only thing that we can do is play our hardest. Come here, show up, play our game, have fun. I think this is such an amazing experience for all of us that we just want to see how long it lasts. Like there's nothing, I think, within any of us that wants to leave, of course. And I think we just really want to go out there and play volleyball um, in, in a completely unprecedented situation. Like we're making history right now. And I think the fact that we can continue to make history um, while we're here is just so exciting. And I think that'll really bring out the fight in all of us. Well, it has been a long time coming, but Georgia Tech fans are so excited. As much as we've enjoyed seeing you guys in Atlanta, we don't want you coming back to Atlanta for a while. So good luck versus Lipscomb and beyond. Michaela Dowd, thanks so much for joining us here on Tech Talks. Thank you, Thank you for having me. <laughs>